Hey there, it's Jeff and Cassandra from RV Parenting and today we're sitting in our RV but we're not parked at an official campground. So what is it? When you're parked somewhere and you're camping, you're spending the night, but you're not in a campground? Well, that term is called boondocking. And this video is all about what is boondocking? What does it mean? What are the pros and cons of doing that? Why would you do that? And how do you make it work? So that's what we're getting into today in this video. boondocking because there's no planning required and if there's anything I've learned about life on the road you need two things the ability to plan well and the ability to just let go and figure it out on the way <laughs> so boondocking allows us that flexibility to just stop in when we're tired of driving and just call it a night so technically boondocking is when you are parked for the night and you're not in a campground in other words you're in a parking lot somewhere maybe a Walmart parking lot maybe just a rest stop on the side of the road but you're spending the night in your RV not in a campground so you don't have any hookups you don't have water you don't have sewer you don't have electric you're just spending the night in your RV somewhere and that can just be whenever you want to pull over just like Cassandra said my favorite place to boondock is going to be at a you know a superstore like you would have a Walmart or a Target uh, personally I like Walmart just because they're very open-minded to people parking their trucks or RVs there but really just anywhere where you can you know maybe get a bite to eat instead of trying to figure out cooking you know do I have enough propane and you know what are we going to do the following day um, so it gives you flexibility on location about needing to get supplies it gives you flexibility on if, what you want to do for dinner the downside would be you're not hanging outside of your RV you're literally just parking and going to bed and that brings up a good point about dinner and things like that because you don't have hookups you don't have electric or water or anything else so you do have to make sure that your water tank is relatively full from the last campground you were at before you boondock because you're going to need water at least to wash hands and for the toilet uh, you may not need to shower but because you don't have electric you're also going to be running your generator and yes you'll be running your generator all night if you need things like heating or air conditioning or even if if you just want to watch the television as you go to bed. So you will be running your generator a lot, potentially running it all night. The good news is, and we found that this out somewhat recently when we were last boondocking and we needed, it was a cold night and we needed the heater on all night, is I, th I think maybe at most we used two gallons of gas to run the generator all night. And it wasn't bad in terms of noise, I didn't think. No, I slept wonderfully that night. Um, you have your blinds, you pull the blinds down, you turn off all the lights, because in parking lots they are going to be well lit. So you just make sure that you have all your blinds down, your privacy set up, um, because it can be kind of bright in a parking lot for your safety as well as other traveler safeties. And you do actually want to find a place that's relatively well lit. You don't want to just park you know, in some discreet location thinking that's better where there's no lighting. I think, you know, especially if you're not familiar with the city, that could potentially be asking for trouble in terms of break-ins or vandalism. Some really other popular places to stop are going to be rest areas that offer, you know, some of them have showers and, you know, you can get cleaned up in the sinks there and not have to worry about using your own water or um, vending machines. If you've already eaten on the road and you just like need a quick little midnight snack like I do on occasion. <laughs> so, you know, you it's great because you have options. You can go to parks, you can go to, you know, basically anywhere. I mean, national forests are a great place to go camping when you don't want to pay because you don't have to pay to camp in any national forest anywhere in the United States. They don't have hookups, so you will be boondocking from a technical standpoint. Um, but it's beautiful, obviously a lot more scenic than a Walmart parking lot. So just know that uh, obviously you want to be able to get in there safely because some national forests would potentially require four-wheel drive vehicles, um, but you can park and camp anywhere in any national forest. So just have that in your back pocket too. So I think now let's go ahead and hear what it sounds like with the generator running inside the RV. We have all the windows closed. The generator really wasn't that loud the last time we boondocked. And we, like I said, we had it on all night long. But let's let you hear what that sounds like, just so you can determine whether or not that amount of noise is going to be disruptive to your sleep. Let's go turn the generator on. Um, and another thing to point out is if other people are boondocking in the same lot as you, you're not going to hear their generator either. I mean, it, it's shockingly quiet. Mm -hmm. um, so don't worry about outside noise pollution if you're worried about 
about, you know, waking your neighbor up, everybody's got their generators on. And you will often find some of the most popular places to boondock, there will be two or three RVs there along with a few 18 wheelers. And, and from a safety standpoint, I kind of like that. I think there's safety in numbers like that. But let's go hear the generator and see what that sounds like inside the RV. I'm gonna start it now. So as you can tell, Jeff just turned on our generator and it's purring like a kitten, which is honestly one of my favorite ways to fall asleep is next to a purring kitten. So you're going to get a good night's rest. It's easy to communicate, easy to hear the television. And, you know, it's a very subtle, calming, humming sound. The other concern I had was the fumes from the generator. After all, the generator is gas powered, just like the vehicle is. It uses the same gas tank, at least in our RV. And there's an exhaust pipe for the generator specifically to, that just sticks out underneath the RV right where the generator is located, which happens to be on this side. And I was a little paranoid about the fumes. He was we, a lot paranoid. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a carbon monoxide detector in the RV, and I do think that's a good idea for everyone. Uh, we did not have any windows open and I don't think you would want to have any windows open if you were running the, the generator. But I was paranoid about it but completely for no reason. We didn't detect any scent of the, the generator's gas whatsoever. Carbon monoxide detector did not go off at all. And you want to leave your generator on even if you're not using your heater or air conditioning just for the simple purpose of your refrigerator is going to need to be on all night. And that's, of course, if yours is not being powered by propane. Some RVs do have the fridge running off of propane. Ours does run off the generator or electricity, though. Another great thing about boondocking is that you don't have to call and make reservations. Um, currently, a lot of RV parks don't offer a lot of online reservations, so you have to make all those phone calls, which when you're in an RV with three kids on the road, that's the last thing you want to do is try to call and make a reservation. So boondocking does allow you that flexibility. It's like, I'm done. I don't want to try to figure out where to go in, you know, New Orleans, or I don't want to figure out where to go in, you know, Tampa, Florida. You just... Find a parking lot and park it. In fact, RV campground websites are probably my number one pet peeve, as most of them look like they were built in the late 90s, shortly after Al Gore invented the internet. It's kind of irritating. If you've done any serious amount of RV camping, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's right up there with poor campground Wi-Fi in terms of my pet peeves. But that's his pet peeve, not necessarily mine. I understand <laughs> that in some cases, like in Louisiana, we were trying to find a camping ground and we needed a call because there were a lot of refugees from the recent storms that came along. So sometimes RV parks aren't able to give you real-time reservations. But I think that just about does it for our video about what is boondocking. When we first started RVing in this RV, we didn't know what that was. We weren't familiar with that term. So I hope this answers all of your questions about what it is, how to do it, what some of the pros and cons are. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. We'd love to see that. And also hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button too. That way you get notified the next time we put out a video. But with that, we'll see you in the next video.